In this class, we're going to consider convergent and divergent sequences. So if you've got a mathematical sequence, then it can only behave in one of two ways. It can either tend towards some number, that number is called the limit, and we say that that sequence converges to that limit, so it's getting closer and closer to the limit as you go down the sequence, or the sequence does not have a limit. And there could be a couple of reasons why it doesn't have a limit, but it's just said to not have a limit. So we're going to explore those options in the examples that I've got here. It's an important point about sequences, whether they converge or diverge. A lot of questions are to do with the behaviour of a sequence, and the behaviour really is one of those two possibilities. So taking a look at this guy here, this is a geometric sequence where each term is generated by multiplying the previous one. So multiplying by two each time to get the next term. And that's just going to carry on and carry on. So you're going to get 32, and then you're going to get 64, and then you're going to get 128, and 256, 512. The numbers are just going to get bigger and bigger quite quickly, actually. So that is clearly not tending towards any number because they're just getting bigger and bigger every time. So we say that the behaviour of that function, sorry, not function, sequence, I guess, is a better way to put it, um, the behaviour of that sequence is that it's tending towards infinity, okay? And in fact, we can be more specific, it's tending towards positive infinity because the numbers are getting bigger. It's infinity in the positive side of the, the number line. Okay, so that's the first case. So that guy has not gone to a limit, it's gone instead to infinity, so we say that that sequence has diverges, um, is divergent or has diverged, okay? So that's a divergent sequence. This guy here, 16, 8, 4, 2, so what's happening there? Well, we're dividing by 2 every time, so we're half in the numbers. So let's actually write out a few more terms here, so just half in them. So we're at 2, half in that to get 1, half in um, 1 to get one half, so we're dividing by two every time. Then we get one quarter. Then we're gonna get one eighth. So what's happening with that sequence? Well, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It can never get beyond zero though, because it can never, you're never multiplying by a negative number. You're multiplying by the same number every time, um, which is one half, or you could think of it as dividing by two, same thing. So there's never a point where you're multiplying or divided by a negative, so it can never flip past zero. But obviously the further you go down here, the bigger this number on the denominator of these fractions is going to become. That means that the overall number is going to be smaller. So effectively you're just getting smaller and smaller and smaller, the same way that this one was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But this one is tending towards not negative infinity, because it's never going negative, it's tending towards zero. So it would never get to zero, it can't get to zero, because if you think about what you're doing here, you're halving the distance between the number and zero every time. So if 16 is here, zero is here, then to get to eight, you would be halving that distance. And then you'd be halving it with a four, halving it with a two, halving it with a one. But if you're always just getting halfway to zero, you can never actually get to zero, but you can get infinitesimally close. You can get as close to zero as you want to get, so even though we never get to zero, we say that this sequence converges because it's getting closer and closer to some number. And in this case, it converges to zero. Um, and we say that zero is the limit. So in other words, it's the end point. It's the point where it stops. You can't go any further. It's the limit of that sequence. Okay, so that one was divergent. This one is convergent. Let's take a look at this guy. So what's going on here? Well, we're subtracting the three every time, so it's getting progressively more negative. So we then go minus 15, minus 18, minus 21. Just getting more and more negative. It's not as quick as the behavior here. These guys were getting positive, more positive by doubling every time. This time you're only taking away three every time. So it's a bit slower, but it's just gonna carry on indefinitely. The numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So that one's also going to tend uh, put the dots back in, that's also going to tend to infinity, but this time it's negative infinity. So you're just going to get to a huge, 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 impossibly huge uh, number, um, and then even beyond that, you just carry on to the idea of infinity. So that one is also divergent. Notice that we don't say that it converges to infinity, um, because it converges to a number, but infinity is not a number, it's just an idea. 
um, there's different types of infinity. So this one is just said to diverge. So that guy diverges to positive infinity. This guy is diverging to negative infinity. This guy converged to zero. So we say that zero is the limit. Another way you could say, put up here, another thing we could put here is to remind ourselves that this means it's got no limit. So divergent means there's no limit. Okay, so that's starting to give us a bit of an introduction to this kind of idea and this way of thinking. Let's take a look at this guy. It looks a little bit quirky. So we don't actually have the terms of the sequence here. We've got the general rule for making the sequence. In the same way, we could make a general rule for this guy and we could make a general rule for this guy. So this is how we generate the terms in the sequence. So let's just actually start to generate some of those just by putting um, one. Remember that the, the subscript n here would refer to the position in the sequence. So this would be position one, two, three, four, five, etc. So if we want to get the first um, number, we don't have the, the numbers, but we need to generate them. So the first number would just be minus two to the power of one, which is just minus two. To get the second number, we put in minus two to the power of two, so put in a two, sorry. So minus two squared is positive four. And then to get x3, the third term, we do minus two to the power of positive three, which comes out to be minus eight. So what we're basically doing is multiplying by minus two each time. So this is another example of a geometric se um, sequence, but you're multiplying by a negative. So that's still a geometric sequence, even though you're multiplying by a negative. The next term we get just by multiplying minus eight, by negative two again, it'll be a double negative to give us a positive number and it would be positive 16. So let's actually just write those out in terms of a sequence. So minus two and then four, minus eight and then 16. And then that's just gonna carry on like that. So what's going on with this one? Well, is it converging? Is it diverging? Is it getting closer and closer and closer to positive infinity or negative infinity? Or is it getting closer to some number? Well, it's actually kind of none of those things. It's not going to positive infinity because it starts to go and then it goes back to a negative. And then it starts to go to negative infinity and then it goes back to a positive. So this is a particular type of sequence called an alternating sequence. We're basically where it's alternating between positive and negative. And that's because a negative power to an odd or even, sorry, a negative number to an odd or even power changes between positive and negative. So these are quite common in sequence questions because they're tricky and they're the kind of things that math teachers like to put in questions. So this guy's gonna alternate. Because it alternates and doesn't tend towards some limit, then by definition, it has to diverge. In fact, it might not even be correct to say that this one diverges. Diverges Im implies kind of shooting off to positive or negative infinity. It's maybe better to just say in this case, the limit does not exist. I suppose maybe divergent is okay, but it's kind of a different divergent to these guys. What we can say though, and what's quite interesting with these, if you split it into the positive and negatives, so minus two, minus eight, starting that one off and then four, um, 16 and carry on that way. So the next term would be multiplying by minus two again, that's gonna give you minus 32 and then multiplying that by minus two again, you get 64. These are quite interesting because these guys do diverge. So that guy, the top guy is gonna carry on to get closer and closer to negative infinity. This guy is gonna get closer and closer. In other words, converge, well not converge, sorry, diverge. Um, to positive infinity. So the separation of those two st like streams of the alternating sequence um, do diverge um, to positive and negative infinity, but the overall thing doesn't go to one or the other, so we just kind of say that it does not exist. So that's really just to try and get some idea of the behavior of sequences. So they either converge or they diverge, they have a limit or they don't have a limit. I should say in this one as well, that it has no limit. Okay, it's definitely not getting closer to any particular number. So this guy diverged, no limit. This guy converged and had a limit of zero, diverged, no limit. This guy alternated, doesn't have um, a limit, and the yeah, the limit does not exist for that one. 
So that's a slightly rarer case. Now that we've got a little bit of understanding of convergent and divergent sequences, we can now look a little more closely at the limit, and we're going to do that in the next class.